Good morning, everyone. Can we all stand? Are you excited to worship the Lord this morning? Encouraging you with Psalm chapter 3, verse 8. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. Now, the reason why we are gathered here today is not for ourselves. This is not our agenda. This is not our liking. But we are here today because of Him. Because our salvation is found in Him. Our identity is found in Him. Our being, our purpose, it's all found in Him. And that is why more than running after the blessing, we run after the giver of blessing. And that is Jesus Himself. So today, bless His name for He is worthy to be praised. Come on church, let's praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah Lord. Come on, we sing. The endless possibilities are showing off your expertise. There's nothing that compares to you, to you. Come on church. You're breaking all the boundaries. You promise us reality. You make us move and move like you, like you. Come on, church, and sing. And dance and come alive in the morning like this power when we do. What does every day tell of all that you do? Jesus, you're a miracle. 
thank you, Lord, for your gracious love and your never-ending grace. We just want to bring back the glory back to you, O oh Lord, as we sing this song. As one we lift our voices, our hearts expectant, O oh Lord, breathe afresh on us. New life is breaking open, your joy our bright. fresh on us Oh Lord breathe the fresh on us You make room for your spirit We make room for the move Bring down every single burden We decrease for more of you We make room for your spirit We make room for you to move open our eyes to see your glory drawing us deeper into you as one we lift our voices our hearts expect oh Lord breathe the fresh on Come, 
we make room not just in the service but we make room in our hearts fill us with your presence that we may see the greatness of Jesus Christ especially Lord that today is communion Sunday may we see Lord the depth of where we have fallen and we may see the power of the righteous right hand of Christ who saves us and we ask you Holy Spirit that ask you fill our hearts this morning you will bring us into repentance you will bring us into a place of denying ourselves and seeing the fulfillment of Jesus' accomplishment at the cross in our lives. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Today is Communion Sunday and clarify ko lang if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are not invited to this communion because partaking of communion and rejecting Jesus is blasphemy. But if you have received from your heart, you have repented of your sins, you have received from your heart, you have surrendered to Christ, you have placed your faith in Him, you are living for Him, then we are inviting you to partake with us. First Corinthians 11, verse 23. I assume everybody has the communion, communion elements. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the night when He was betrayed, He took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Take it and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. You know what? Because of our sins, Jesus' body had to be bruised, had to be nailed, had to be pierced, had to be broken, so that forgiveness can be made available. And this is why, although this may be just an instrument and not the real body of Christ, we as a church realize that we owe our allegiance to him that it is through his his body that was bruised and nailed at the cross that we can stand here today and worship him that we can stand here today guilt free and condemned free because of his sacrifice and that is why our prayer has the posture of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for sending your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. As we partake of the bread, Lord, this is not just a religious ritual. We remember and participate in his body that was broken for us. Thank you for letting him take our place in receiving the judgment that we deserve because of our sin. We also recognize that all of us who partake of the bread today are one and are all part of His one body, the church. The body of Christ broken for us and everyone say, thanks be to God. Let us now partake of the bread together.
verse 25, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which has been poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take it and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, the amazing thing about this is that the shed blood of Jesus that was poured out on Calvary is the same blood that has the power to forgive and to free us from all condemnation. We are just grateful that the blood of Jesus never loses its power. The blood of Jesus still heals, still restores even today. Yes, we have the Holy Spirit, but basically, through a believer, our confidence is in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Because there will never be a day in your life that the devil will not condemn you. There will never be a day in your life that the devil will not lie to you, that he will not attack you. And the only, one of the only most powerful protection besides the Holy Spirit and besides the Word of, of God is really the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the blood of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we partake of the cup, we remember, Lord, and participate in His blood that was poured out to cleanse us from all our sins. We thank you that through faith in Him, we are now holy, righteous, and pure before your sight. We thank you that through Him, all of our sins are forgiven. And we could stand before your presence without any guilt, condemnation, and shame. We also thank you that through His blood, we now, want, we now are part of a new covenant relationship with you. We now can call you our Father, and you have received us as your beloved children. We thank you that we are also now part of the new covenant family, the church. May we live our lives in love and unity with one another even as we love and are in unity with you. The blood of Christ shed for us and all of God's people say thanks be to God. Let us now partake of the Lord's cup together. For whenever we eat this bread, and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Lord, we continue to worship You this morning for who You are and for what You have done. When the King of glory shows up, everyone will bow down. And when the King of glory, Jesus Christ, shows up, we realize our righteousness, our goodness is always found in Him. And more than just us bowing down to this King of glory, I believe every sickness will also bow down. And I believe there's a spirit of anointing to heal this morning. So if you are here and you felt like you have a sickness, may balatian ka, may kasakit sa lawas mo. If you are here and there's discomfort in any part of your body, if you are here and maybe you have anxious thoughts in your mind, I want you to raise your hand. You don't have to go here in the front. I want you to raise your hand so we can pray with you. Sige, anyone else? If you are well, kung okay kaya, can you just lay your hands to the person raising their hands? Wala lang kita touch, just lay your hands either beside, in front, or at their back. No? Sa nag-raise ng hand, just raise it higher para ma-distinguish ko lang ang nag-lay hands kag nag-raise ng hands. Lord, salamat because you did not just pay for our sins at the cross. You also paid in full 
all the sickness of your people. And today, Lord, there are people here who are sick and you know them by name. Lord, I pray that your healing would come and that sickness will bow down to the name that is above every name, the King of glory, Jesus Christ. So Lord, we rebuke that sickness in the lives and in the physical body of your people. Lord, today I declare, Lord, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, spirit, soul, and body, sickness, flee, for you are gone in Jesus' name. You are not welcome in the house of the Lord. You are not welcome in the bodies, in the physical and spiritual bodies of your people. Lord, we plead your blood upon every sickness, upon every disease, about, upon every infirmity, Lord. And Lord, we declare your healing, the healing that was paid at the cross, the healing that resurrected Jesus Christ on the third day, the healing that we all experience when you gave us the Holy Spirit. Lord, impute that healing to those who are sick today. And if you are that person, just receive the healing from the Lord. Say, I receive your healing, Lord. Ginabaton ko, Lord, ang imos blood. Ginabaton ko, Lord, ang imo healing. Ginabaton ko, Lord, ang imo forgiveness today in my life. Lord, tanduga sila, Lord, kagayuha sila subong aga. Lord, remove, Father God, that spirit that induced that sickness in their body. And Lord, restore. Restore their immune system. Restore, Father God, their heart. Restore their blood vessels. Restore every organ in their body. Bring into completeness, Lord, their healing even today. Lord, we call the things that are not as though they were. Because we live by faith and not by sight. We live on the promises of God and not on what we feel. So Lord, today we declare that healing upon every person in this place. And if you have received your healing from the Lord, just give Him thanks this morning. Just give Him praise. Just give Him glory. Salamat, Lord. You heard our prayers. You're healing your people. And you are allowing us, Lord, to be filled, to be refreshed with your presence as always. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. Salamat, salamat, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, music team. You may take your seats. By the way, uh, a word of caution lang. <laughs> when we pray for healing, uh, yes, we respond in faith that you are healed. But please, im nagya po ni maintenance. Oh. Kag before ka mag-adjust ang imo bulong or maintenance, please consult your doctor para guided lang kita, no? Okay, sometimes bala kun tamaan ka ka hype, ihaboy mong imo bulong, di ka na magbakal, no? And before you knew it, no, uh, God is also using the medicine for your healing. No? So just to be uh, properly cautioned with that, uh, please Continue to visit your doctor. And if ever nadula gid, then let your doctor tell you, not you yourself telling you, untaton mo yung medication. So, you are in victory. 9 a.m. service. We exist to honor God and make disciples. And it's not just our worship song that we give the Lord, our worship, but it is also through our giving. And uh, this morning, the one who will... Uh, exhort us in our giving is my secret chef <laughs> and my ex-girlfriend, Lois. Yeah, good morning. May aga sa tanan. 
uh, last month um, during the World Conference in South Africa, on our third day during breakfast, I had this really uh, encounter with the Lord. Let me share it to you. Um, during breakfast, I realized, I've noticed that my other pair of my earrings uh, is lost. So I, I told Rafi, Rafi, adula ang ako ng earrings. So uh, would you, can you please check? Uh, Rafi, would, uh, uh, he went outside, he checked the corridor, he checked the elevator. Because you know what? The earrings was a gift from my sister-in-law. So it was really very precious to me. So I also checked. So I went back to the coffee station. I went back to the bread station because it was a buffet in the hotel. So Rafi told, yeah, he went back and he said, na wala, gajang earrings. So bako, Oh, but I told God, Lord, help me to find that because it was really something special. No, so parang I went back, Rafi went back, so it's nowhere to be found. So I, I, I said, God, okay lang, Lord. Ah. Uh, we're, uh, we're about to go back to our breakfast. You know, if you are in a hotel, you see this person before you enter, right? There's always this person staff that will always say to you, good morning. So what is your room number, mom or sir? So before I, I was about to, to take our breakfast, really the Lord clearly and very specifically told me that you go to that person. So that very uh, friendly American girl, huge girl, uh, just welcoming us every day as we had our breakfast. So I silently went to that person and I asked her and I told her about my earrings before I even, you know, I even uh, finished my, 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 I want to say to her, she handed over the earrings. See? Parang, uh, parang I was so amazed because it was really the Lord. It was really, parang I was so, there's really great joy because more than the earrings, but it's really, I encountered the Lord that day personally. I encountered His love towards me. And I believe, sure, it's the same with you, all of you. God loves you because, you know what, He is He's our God. And even the very least of your concerns, even the mundane, mundane or uh, the least of your concerns, God really knew because He is really acquainted to all of you. Diba? So parang God really is always mindful about your needs. So I, I realized when I just think about the situation and what happened to me, God dropped this verse in my heart, Romans 8.32. It says here, He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for, all, for us all, how will He not able, along with Him, graciously give us all things? So God is really mindful because He loves you. So I hope and I pray that you would always choose to seek God first in everything in your life. So let me pray. God, we thank you. Because even as we return the tenth, the tenth, the tithe, and the offering, Lord God, which is really belongs to you, God. We are doing this because, Lord God, it is really an act of faith, an act of trust, an acknowledgement that you are really the source of everything in our life, God. And I do believe, God, that you are really pleased with the faith of your people, God. Continue, God, to shower them with your grace every day of their life. And as we, God, draw near to you today, or even every day of our life, God, help us not to draw near to you, not because of the things that you can give to us, but because you want to draw near to you because you want to really know you more as our Father, as our ultimate provider, God. We want to have a relationship with you, Lord. Thank you, God. Bless your people today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you. Good morning once again. Uh, we will continue with our series, uh, What Shapes Us. And uh, this series is basically who we are as victory. And what we believe and what are the things that are non-negotiable to us. And uh, I will say this with all love. If you think na what we believe and what shapes us is different from what you believe, uh, I'm not saying that you leave this church, but it also would be good to ask God, Lord, where are you planting me? What church or what organization or what ministry do I really belong? 
Because the reason why we're having this series is that basically people will see themselves in their God-given purpose, in their God-given calling. So you will not just be a spectator, you are now getting involved in what God is doing in this organization or in this church. No? And uh, this is so crucial because this will, this will actually unite us. This will actually move us into one direction. No? This will allow us to understand each other. And at the same time, this will propel us to our God-given calling. Different churches have different callings. No? And actually, damo na na-offend sa akon, kag sa iban nga pastors, because we are all about uh, church planting, campus ministry, world missions, and real life. We are, we are all about honoring God and making disciples. In fact, uh, even our, our preaching in our message, naga evolved na dira sila tanan. And despite having different scriptures and different topics, we still point to the very thing that God has called us to do. No? So if ever God is calling you into something else, and victory could not offer it, okay lang gid, no? Na to ask God, Lord, where are you leading me? Because we don't want you to stay here and you feel left out. We don't want you to come here and you, you, you feel like I cannot do that or that is not me. No? So please, uh, let this series shape you and let this series speak to you so that you can also assess, Lord, ati, diri mo ginman kong ibutang, amo man na ang gusto ko himoon, I will get involved, I will become a part of it. No? So, week one, just want to uh, go about this, para wala lang kita may malipatan, the things that shapes us. Week one, we believe in God. God eternally exists in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One in essence, having the same divine attributes and perfections, with each person fulfilling distinct roles. Gracious in His eternal purpose to redeem a people for Himself, God is worthy of wholehearted love and worship. So I believe wala diri contest. No, you believe, you all believe in God. Second, we believe in the creation and the fall of men. We believe God created all things, visible and invisible, out of nothing, and all He made were very good. God created humans in His image, male and female, to know, to love, and glorify Him in covenant relationship and to serve as stewards of the earth. The first Adam, unfortunately, sinned against God, resulting in alienation, death, guilt, shame, and a curse upon the earth. On the third Sunday, we believe in Jesus. We believe in Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God, incarnated for our redemption, born of the Virgin Mary, fully God, and fully man, one person in two natures, as our substitute, he lived a sinless life and willingly, willingly gave himself as a propitiatory and reconciling sacrifice for our sins on the cross. He died, was buried, rose bodily on the third day, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father as the only mediator between God and humanity, and one day He will return again to judge the living and the dead. Last Sunday, we talked about what we believe and what shapes us is the gospel. We believe the gospel is the good news that God became man in Jesus Christ to reconcile lost people to Himself. He lived a perfect sinless life on our behalf and died on the cross for our sins. 
He was buried on the third day, rose again from the dead, securing our redemption forever. Having triumphed over Satan and the forces of darkness, He ascended into heaven as Lord of all. Everyone who repents and believes in Him receives forgiveness of sins and eternal life. And today, we will talk about the Holy Spirit. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, giver and renewer of life, sent to guarantee our promised future. The Spirit convicts concerning sin, enlightens to the truth, awakens to repentance and faith, regenerates sinners and unites believers to Christ, making them partakers of the divine nature. By the Spirit's indwelling, Christians enjoy God's presence and fellowship. By being filled with the Holy Spirit, Christians are divinely empowered for witness and ministry. As they bear the fruit of the Spirit and exercise spiritual gifts, believers edify the church and bear witness to God's kingdom. This is what we believe. This is what shapes us. John 14, verse 15 to 21. Can we all stand as we give reverence to the Word of God? Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. You know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, He it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, it's impossible to preach the third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit, in 40 minutes. But Lord, today I pray that in that limitation, you will show yourself faithful and that your Holy Spirit, according to your word, will become our teacher and there will be clarity and there will be conviction and there will be transformation and there will be an eye-opener about your Holy Spirit in our lives that we will also fall in love with him and we will nurture and bring that relationship to the next level. This we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Two things or two questions. Do you know the Holy Spirit? Or do you have a relationship with Him? Now, to be honest, uh, siguro, conservative estimate, as far as the East is from the West, that's how wide 
the Holy Spirit is, and that is even an understatement. Because the truth is, as far as the east is from the west, means there's no ending. And even as a pastor, my understanding of the Holy Spirit is just as this. And I hope na you will realize there's more to know. There's more to discover that I have not yet attained the fullness, although it's impossible, but the fullness of my understanding about the Holy Spirit. Because I believe the Holy Spirit is the most misunderstood and the least known deity in the triune God. But the Holy Spirit cannot be denied. He is the missing link. He is the piece of the puzzle. And He is the overall need of a believer to live a victorious life, to become an overcomer in life's struggles, and the missing link to achieve the fullness of Christ's likeness in our life. Jesus said to the disciples, don't go back to Jerusalem or don't depart from Jerusalem yet. Don't do ministry yet. Don't preach the gospel yet. But wait for the promise of the Father which you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So Jesus, Jesus intentionally cautioned his disciples. Hulat ka mo, anay, because you need him. It's almost similar today, no? Miyara ya, Kristiyano. Pagka born again, feeling ya. Yes, grabe ang passion, grabe ang will to do the will of God. But oftentimes, that is apart from the Holy Spirit and it's just all flesh. And even Paul, when he saw the early converts in the book of Acts, this was his question to them. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? And it's the same question for all of us today. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? Or you just prayed a sinner's prayer and that was it? Well, if that is all about the sinner's prayer and there is no Holy Spirit, I'm afraid you were not truly regenerated. So, for Paul and for Jesus, particularly kay Jesus, it's just impossible to live a Christian life apart from the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It cannot be impossibly. And in fact, it, it is also possible that you are here on church, you are a born-again believer, you believe in Jesus Christ, you're reading God's Word, but you are left to your own flesh without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And mind you, that is dangerous. Because now, you are trying to do the will and the purpose of God on your own strength. On your own wisdom. On your own judgment and belief system and mindsets. Hambal ni D. Martin Lloyd-Jones. The worst thing that can happen to a man is to succeed before he is ready. And to succeed without the power of the Holy Spirit is always a failure. If you succeed on your own strength without the guidance and the leading of the Holy Spirit, that success will become a curse. 
So if you feel threatened, ari na, Holy Spirit, ari na, speaking in tongues, if you feel threatened by that, there are a few questions that I need you to reflect on. And maybe this is what is stopping the Holy Spirit to move in your life. This is questions when asked is the very reason why He will not show up because He is not welcome. If you feel threatened by the Holy Spirit, is it because you are happily in your comfort zone? Anyway, Pastor, I'm going to ko. 9 a.m., the same chair, every Sunday. Tapos si ni Pastoria, manyaga lang ko sa SM. And then mapuli ko, and then Monday, and then repeat. Comfort na ko, comfortable na ko. Are you afraid of what the Holy Spirit might do to you? If He is going to fill you with His power? Are you afraid of what He would require of you? Basi, may ipag-give up siya sa imo? Basi, may aras siya ipa-repent sa imo? Basi, i-call niya ka sa isa ka lugar? what He might ask you to do? Do you think you will lose something if you make yourself vulnerable and totally open to Him? Sa una, actually, hindi ko gusto magsimba. Because every time, kung sino man na yung pastor mag-preach, feeling ko, ako gini yung gini-istorya yaman. No? So sa una, para hindi na lang ko ma-convict, hindi na lang ko yung masimba. Ang bot sa inyo yati, maybe present ka mo yan. Pero ako, nag-decide ko hindi ko masimba kay ako naman na itong istoryahan nila. Are you afraid he will embarrass you? Because if he prompts you to share the gospel and you think you will be embarrassed in front of this person, do you think you will lose your man-made identity? Ay, basi mahuyaan ko di. Ay, basi ko mag-obey ko, madula mga friends ko. Do you think you might have to change? And the fact is, nobody wants to change. Gusto naton mag-change ang politiko. Ma-change ang ato neighbor, ma-change ang ato enemy, ma-change ang simbahan, ma-change ang, ang, ang Palestinian, ma-change ang Russians. Pero hindi ko yan mag-change. So those questions would make us realize, do hindi gin man siya galing, welcome diri. Because if I am not willing to change, I mean, why will the Holy Spirit shows, show up when you have already decided in your head and in your heart, ah, amo lang ko yagyapon. If you will disobey the Word of God, if you will disobey His voice, why would they, if you have already decided that before even coming to church, then why would the Holy Spirit show up? Maano pa di siya? When you have decided in your heart na hindi ko yan mag-forgive, kay very hurtful to, kag painful, ang ginhimo yan sa akon, why would the Spirit show up? If ginbaton mo na yan, ati mapatay na lang ko after six months, kaya mo to hambal ni doktor, why would the Holy Spirit show up? Introduction pa lang to. So, I promise to end by... <laughs> so, go straight na ko sa verse. I'm just building up the Holy Spirit para maging uhaw ka mo. Three things about the Holy Spirit that we see in the text, and I will be using a lot of text. 
and there's no proper view of the Holy Spirit than, the, than Jesus Himself from the words of Jesus Christ Himself. And I hope you will fall in love with this three, with this third person in the triune God. The first one is the Holy Spirit is a person. No? So the Holy Spirit is not a, an impersonal force. No? Ang Holy Spirit, hindi niya Jedi. No? The Holy Spirit is not a cosmic consciousness. No? The Holy Spirit is a person. And this is why in church history, gin change eventually ang unang belief about the Holy Spirit. Because our use of Alexandria talk about the nature and the character of God. He believed that God the Father alone exists and that He is God. And He created Jesus Christ para maipadala siya sa kalibutan. And He believed that God the Father and God the Son created the Holy Spirit and that is why we have the Holy Spirit. No? But eventually, the council in 325 AD wrote the Nicene Creed, or what we know as the Apostles' Creed, that clearly delineated a statement of faith as to the personality of the Holy Spirit. No? So, humbly Jesus, chapter 14, verse 26, But the Helper... The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance, remembrance all that I have said to you. So, do claro man, this is a person. Verse 15 of 26, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, He... He will bear witness about me. So, sounds like a human being. Sounds like a person. Maybe actually a human being, but a person. In chapter 16, verse 8, And when He comes, He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Chapter 16, verse 13, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. For He will not speak of His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak and He will declare to you the things that are to come. No? So, very clear that this Holy Spirit, He will guide, He will speak, He will tell, He will declare what is mine in Jesus Christ. So all of these activities speak of a person with a personality. He is a person. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. And do not grieve. Kung impersonal force lang na, mag-grieve mo siya. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. No? The Holy Spirit can also be insulted in Hebrews 10 verse 29. The Holy Spirit can also be lied to. So this is a person with a personality. Any relationship with God should include the Holy Spirit. That is why si Paul, every time he addresses the church in the New Testament, he would always start or end the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So, we have here a person with a personality. And we need to be cautious that the Holy Spirit is all about power. 
Hindi pwede nga ang pag-view natin sa Holy Spirit, ah, power na siya. Ah, siya na ang naghahatag sa anointing. No? So what does this mean to all of us? If the Holy Spirit is a person, we don't seek the power, we seek the person. He's a person. He's not a powerful entity. He's not a cosmic force. He's a real person. Therefore, seek the person. The question can never be, how can I get more of the Holy Spirit in my life? The right question should be, how can the Holy Spirit get hold more of my life? Hindi siya pwede nga gamitin talang siya for our own comfort, and interest. But we give ourselves to Him. The Holy Spirit will not adjust to us. We must adjust to Him. So the Holy Spirit is a person. The second one, the Holy Spirit is more than just a person because He is a divine person. He is God. The Holy Spirit is not a substitute name for God. The Holy Spirit is also God Himself. Humble uh, Jesus, Jesus, John 14, verse 16, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, it neither sees Him nor knows Him. You know Him, for He dwells with you and will, will be in you. No? So, the Holy Spirit is sent by the Father. No? Just in time as the Son is returning to the Father. So in a sense, the apostles and the disciples together with Jesus Christ for three and a half years, nothing has changed between the believer today and the presence of the Holy Spirit. As if nothing has changed. As if Jesus is with us because He sends the Helper. He dwells with you. So this is not just a person or a divine being with us, but He is in us. Chapter 15, verse 26, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, He will bear witness about me. So kung wala ang presence sang Holy Spirit, there is no witness to who Jesus Christ is. Without the Holy Spirit, we will never understand who Jesus is and what He has done for us. Because the Spirit bears witness to what Jesus has done for us. Chapter 16, verse 8, And when He comes, He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness in judgment. This shows you that the Holy Spirit is active and present in the world. That's why if you remember your water baptism, not the sprinkle of water, but the literal water baptism that you were submerged in water. We say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Because we believe in the triune God and we believe in the Holy Spirit. In Acts 5 verse 4, you have not lied to man but to God, talking about the Holy Spirit. 
In Psalm 139, where shall I go from your spirit? Or where, where shall I free, flee from your presence? So the Holy Spirit is God. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. And He is also creator. Job 33 verse 4, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. So he is not just a person. He is a divine person. He is God. And that is why Paul said to Timothy, people have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. And when there is a form of godliness, all you have is religion and dead religion. In fact, if the Holy Spirit is misunderstood, if there is no clarity to who He is, and if He is not welcome in our life, what do you think will happen to our prayer meetings? People start losing interest in prayer. When you lose interest on spiritual things, apiktado na na siya dayon tanan. You will start losing interest in worship. You can't worship God. Conscious ka permi kung ano ang imo nga purma. Conscious ka permi sang imo hair. Conscious ka permi sang imo skin. Conscious ka permi kung what other people will say about you. Because you are driven by your flesh, you are not driven by the Spirit. You'll start losing interest about what the church is doing. You start losing interest about what is happening in the world. You start losing interest on the preaching of God's word. You start losing interest on the word of God. And kung wala na si Holy Spirit and everything is about the flesh, you lose prayer, you lose worship, you lose the, your time with the Lord. And it will overly develop your entertainment. Nami gijang YouTube. Nami gijang ang Netflix. Nami gijang ang mga reels kag TikToks. So he is a person. Secondly, he is a divine person. And third, the Holy Spirit is called the Helper. Verse 14, uh, verse 16 of chapter 14, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Helper to be with you forever. He did not say to be with you during the first year of your salvation. He did not say to be with you when you feel like being led by the Spirit. To be with you forever. Ang lain, si Lord nag-offer na sang somebody to help us, but we reject the offer. No? So, bragi kita ka believe sa aton sarili. No? The, the term helper is the word in the Greek, parakletus, no? which means also comforter which means one who is called alongside to help you. Amuna ang role sang Holy Spirit. Can you imagine living life here on earth and you don't have the spiritual helper? Physical helper pa lang ganin, nag-ugtas ka na. No, grabe, nag-leave lang siya. Why na siya nagbalik? No, may utang pa din siya sa balay. No? Tapos, hindi pa siya mag-duty kung wala internet. No? Tapos ang pagkaon nga para to kay baby, yung kaon niya pa sa rep. No? Kareklamo kita kay why kita helper nga physical. How much more should you be disturbed if you have no spiritual helper? If you are on your own. The helper you wake up and you realize, Salamat, Lord, because you gave me the Holy Spirit.
He is a helper. I will pray to the Father and He will give you another helper. In the same way Jesus was with the apostles, the Holy Spirit is with us today. He is a permanent. No? To be with you per, forever, hindi niya nga, dugay-dugay, bayaan niya ka, dugay-dugay, mabakasyon siya, dugay-dugay, malive, dugay-dugay, kung di makadto. He is with you forever. He is a permanent helper. Verse 17, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be with you. He comes alongside with us. No? So even in your most difficult moments, in your darkest moments, in your isolated moments, the Holy Spirit is with you. So you don't have to be alone. Kung waya ka gin sabat, okay lang gid. No? Iyan a loss. No? But you have the Holy Spirit. He's the one that makes us uncomfortable and moves us towards the cross. No? Can you imagine kung wala ang Holy Spirit tapos may nakita ka sa imong screen? Pornography? Kung wala si Holy Spirit, click eh. Kaya wala sa may makonvict si imo mo. Wala sang may ma-remind si Imo na you are a new man. You have been forgiven. You have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. If we function according to our ability alone, we get the glory. If we function according to the power of the Spirit within us, God will get the glory. So the Holy Spirit comes to make us save. He comes inside of us to sanctify us and He comes upon us to empower us. So the Holy Spirit is a reliable helper. He is a permanent helper. And this is what I want to give you in this short sermon. The Holy Spirit is a divine person who helps us. I hope you will have that love and that hunger to know Him as well as you do Jesus and as you do God the Father. Can we all stand? Lord, today, we ask, Lord, that you will lighten, Lord, our thoughts. That we may see from the lens of the Spirit who the Holy Spirit is. Uh, I think it's okay if we can sing a, another song and I ask the music team to join me here. Lord, today, more than just the head knowledge about the Holy Spirit, we want to encounter Him today. Lord, we ask, just like what you promised to the disciples, to wait. Lord, today we wait and we ask your presence through the Holy Spirit to come. Lord, I pray that you come in the midst of us. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your Holy Spirit, Lord, flow upon this place. Holy Spirit, minister to every heart. Allow us to see, Lord, what's missing in our life. Allow us, Lord, to see the void that we cannot fill on our own strength but your Holy Spirit alone. Just receive the Holy Spirit today. Lord, come upon your people. Come upon your church. Come upon, Lord, those who are hungry and thirsty for more. 
Come upon, Lord, every person, Father God, that they may be filled to the overflow. Lord, let your rivers flow in this place. And as your river flows, Lord, let there be a heart of worship. Let there be, Lord, a, a surrender to your throne of grace. Let there be, Lord, a prodigal running back to his father to be reconciled and to be accepted. Lord, we worship you. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Be enthroned in the praises of your people.
Can you raise your hand as we close with a benediction? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you both now and forevermore. And all of God's people shout big, big. Thank you, everyone. Continue to honor God. Make disciples. Continue to seek the Holy Spirit in your life. God bless your Sabbath.